has there been any major changes over the past 10 years that have um, changed the way we support and supply the industry and any challenges that that's caused us? Yeah, I think so. I think um, the biggest thing for DBD, because bearing in mind we, we, we were fairly small, as I've mentioned in the early stages, um, um, because the some of the industry players was saw DBD as a risk um, from a from a company perspective, they were reluctant to engage with us. And so we were sort of forced down a route of going into rental because because people wanted to rent our products. Um, but but none of the big rental players were prepared. They, they all take our product now, but but at yeah. the time they, they, they were they were a little bit reluctant to, to deal with a company of our size. So so we were forced by market demand to to, to, to create a rental fleet. And, and that was quite a challenging, certainly from the financial burden that that puts on a company. You, you need to get your return on your investment quite quickly. Um, but that that proved quite successful in the end. Um, so, um, so that was one major, major change to the company. We then had to become a rental company as well. Um, I think that the other thing that we done, which was um, quite bizarre, really, when we were working from a home base, we had to outsource manufacture and anything that we had to change, you know, it was brought in, create a system and it went back out again. Um, but then when we moved to facilities, um, we then brought that outsourced manufacture back inside the company. So we brought it back in and we, we, we so we maintained and we've done it on our own. So that was quite an interesting change and and procedures and structures we had to put in place to change the, the scope of the company from a, you know, an integrator to a manufacturer, which was quite interesting. Um, and, and, and now, of course, we now look at um, what we're potentially doing for the future where we're pushing in some cases some competencies that we're comfortable with and we've got control of we're going to allow to outsource some of those already again so it's quite interesting how that 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 cyclic of of business concept goes round of sort of you know outsource in source for want of a better word then outsource again it, 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 it is quite interesting um but i think that's been industry change definitely um carillion was a massive change and and i think what we've done what one of our one of our faults through the through the growth period of DBD was to lose sight of our diversification. We came into the rail market to become diverse in what we were currently doing, and then we almost like switched the seesaw to being completely rail centric. Yeah, and then and then as as the sort of CP five. CP6 type transitions of the of the procurement structure of the round network transited. As the old adage goes, if, if network rail catches a cold, we get pneumonia um, because because when you're you're so reliant on a single client or a single industry sector and that starts to go a little bit wobbly and, and it will do because it's cyclic, then 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 you do struggle a little bit. And yeah. I think at one point we we sort of we, we didn't thankfully we were able we we are still diverse and we still work in a number of markets but at one point rail was a bit all consuming and i think we had to pull ourselves out of that a little bit and just to continue with our other stuff um you know well when when the when everyone's making hay and the rail projects are going through and every, then it's fantastic you know yeah, but, yeah. But, but but you have to have that diversification but but with that diversification, I think that adds a lot of value to DBD because what it does is it brings alternate methods and alternate structures in, into a market that's desperate for them. You know, I mean, I think the rail industry is desperate for innovation and desperate for change. Yeah. Um, so and I think that's what we've done a little bit without some of our capabilities. So, um, so yeah. And, and obviously, you, 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 in this time of, of crisis, we'd be bonkers not to mention COVID. But that, yeah, that has definitely been rather than an industry change. It's more of a, a world change. And that that has definitely put some strains and, and, and things on the business where we've had to adapt and 
and make sure that you know as key worker status we've had to you know make sure that our facilities are prepped and ready for a workforce to to work within it and and continue to support the markets that we serve so that's been quite challenging but but i think we've done quite well and i think it's a credit yes, to all, it's a credit to all the dbd people you know um not you know notwithstanding some were on furlough at the beginning because we didn't really understand what was going on and and you know we, uh, we we've managed to get back um to a reasonable level of, of working and operation and 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 you know ho now hopefully we can see that the light at the end of the tunnel so yeah you know and the way we dealt with that as well like we've thought of different ways to support our customers you know with the hygiene services and whatnot exactly yeah i think i think you're absolutely right and i think yeah the fact that the cabinet office asked us to sort of put something on their twitter feed you know was was a, a credit to the people at dbd and the fact that they, they know that we're doing a, a you know a good job and we were we were supporting a, a very worthwhile cause to yeah. protect the guys on the workforce you know that unfortunately sadly and, and it's been well reported in the media and everything there are people that have tried to profiteer out of the situation and i suppose you know unfortunately that sort of thing happens and there's been some non-compliances to people what have they've been declaring certain capabilities that they um that that give you a protection against covid when they really didn't yeah, um, yeah but whereas we've always you know we've always stood by the rules that we created the 10-step plan and, and to make sure that our equipment is covid clean you know that's that's what we've done and, and, and you know it seems to be working so it's, it's good yeah,